Good morning, and a very happy Easter to you all. Um, a warm welcome to our service of celebration. Whether you are here in church this morning or whether you're joining us online, you are very welcome. Um, a couple of notices before we start. If you are in the creative corner this morning, you have the opportunity to make an Easter wreath, which in true Blue, Blue Peter style, here's one Phil prepared earlier. As part of this special service, there will be an opportunity for us to renew our baptismal vows. And so after the first hymn, please would you turn towards the font at the back of the church where our service will continue. But for now, we're going to pause for a moment of stillness as we open our hearts to the presence of the risen Jesus here with us now. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The God of life, who broke the bonds of death and raised Jesus from the tomb, 
be with you all. And also with you. Please, would you join me in acclaiming Christ's resurrection with the response, He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Beloved siblings, this is the morning on which the Lord appeared to his friends and opened their eyes to what the scriptures foretold. As we gather to celebrate his glorious resurrection, I invite those of you who are baptised to renew your commitment to worship and serve God. The response to each question is, I will. At your baptism, you turned to Christ, repented of your sins and renounced evil. Will you continue to follow him as your Lord and Saviour? I will. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in prayer? I will. Will you persevere in resisting evil and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ, seeking and serving Christ in all people and loving your neighbour as yourself? I will. Will you acknowledge Christ's authority over human society by prayer for the world and its leaders, by defending the weak, and by seeking peace and justice? I will. I'd like to invite any children who would like to join us in the sprinkling of the congregation to come and collect a beaker of water. Please note I said sprinkle and not soak. <laughs> In a moment, I'm going to pray and then we're going to uh, sprinkle the congregation. So children, if you can get a beaker and dip your sprig into the water and then after I've prayed, you are loose to go and sprinkle the congregation, okay? So, let us pray that through this rite of sprinkling, God will give us grace faithfully to fulfill the promises we have made. O oh God Most High, in our baptism we have been immersed in the saving death of our Lord, that we might rise to the glory of new life. From the Lamb sacrificed for us on the cross, you have made spring up for us fountains of living water. Cleanse and bless us as we are now sprinkled with this holy water.
Thank you all so much. Let's collect our thoughts in a moment of silence. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. Amen. Having affirmed together our baptismal commitment, let us listen with open ears and hearts to the good news of this Easter day. Acts 10, 43. So Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly, I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what he is right is acceptable to him. As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. You yourself know what happened throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee, after the baptism that John proclaimed how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a, on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and made him to appear not to all the people, but us who had been chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Early, on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter 
And the other disciples set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. The disciples returned to their homes, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. So Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. It's wonderful to welcome you all here today for our Easter celebration. And I'm so delighted the church is so beautifully decorated. Those of you who were here during the week in Holy Week will have seen how bare and stripped back the church was. But now it's full of flowers, the brass is out, the candles are lit, and most importantly, it's full of people. I thought I'd bring my own contribution to our Easter decorations. This is my Easter banner. It looks a bit small in this space, but anyway, it'll do. Today has an important backstory. Easter doesn't come out of nowhere. This Holy Week, we've been thinking about how Jesus was betrayed, arrested, and killed, and then rose again. But backstories are important, aren't they? I saw the uh, film Top Gun Maverick the other day again, and I really enjoyed it. Now, you don't have to have seen the original 1980s Top Gun to enjoy Top Gun Maverick, but it really helps, doesn't it, to understand where some of the characters are coming from, the experiences that have shaped their lives, and why the plot happens in the way that it does. And my Easter banner helped me to think about the backstory of Easter. And I'm going to use each letter to remind us about that. So firstly, E for enemies. Jesus had lots of enemies. There were people who were religious leaders and lawyers, and they didn't like Jesus' message, and they wanted to put a stop to it. A stands for angry. Some of Jesus' own followers were frustrated with him. They thought that he was going to stop the Romans from being the invading occupiers to bring about a victory for Israel. One of them was so disappointed, 
He even betrayed Jesus. S stands for suffering. Jesus suffered. His body was literally torn as his flesh was cut on the cross. Those who loved him must have had their hearts broken. The T you'll see is in the shape of a cross. Jesus suffered a terrible death on the cross. And the Bible tells us that the moment that Jesus died, the the curtain in the innermost holy part of the temple was torn in two. Such was the significance of this moment as the Son of God is killed. So, Jesus' followers must have thought, is this the end? They had so many hopes and dreams. It seems they'd all been shattered as Jesus was killed. And I do wonder if they had some regrets. Ah, for regrets. Jesus' disciples had given up a good living. Some of them were fishermen, earning a good wage. They'd given everything up to follow Jesus. But now it seemed like it was all in tatters. And so they took Jesus' body and they wrapped it in cloths and they put it into a tomb and they sealed the stone across the tomb. All of those hopes, all of those dreams, so many of them shattered, now enclosed in that tomb. But as we've just heard, on that first Easter morning, Mary came to the tomb and found that the stone had been unrolled and those cloths that had been on Jesus' body were simply neatly folded in a pile where his body had been. And then she turned and she saw someone. She realized it was Jesus and that he was alive. All that had been torn apart was restored. All the suffering and the pain was now turned to joy and celebration as all those pains were restored to new life. It worked, wow. Um, (laughs) So, the backstory is important, isn't it? Because it's only through that pain and suffering, the loss, the tearing, that the joy of the new life will come. And I found, and I know many of you have found, that it's in the moments in life when we suffer the most, when we lose people we love, that we discover sometimes the real depth of God's love and the power of God's love in those moments. And so I think my banner now can stand for something different. Each letter, I think the first letter, E, stands for excitement. This is wonderful news. There is actually also an egg here, so maybe E stands for egg, and we're going to have our Easter egg hunt and share our excitement of the resurrection with other people. A stands for always. This wasn't just exciting news for the people at the time. This is for us today and for always the good news of God's love. The S stands for surprise. We do discover Jesus' risen life in surprising ways, perhaps just in the beauty of the world around us, in the kindness of a stranger or in a relationship that's been reconciled. And the cross is still here. But no longer does it represent terrible suffering. Now it represents new life in Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. And the E stands for everyone. No matter who you are, what your background is, you may have never been to church before in your life. It doesn't matter what your sexuality, gender, identity, or any of that stuff, this is a message for everyone. And so, the R stands for rejoice. That was a bit of a magic trick, but the resurrection is no illusion. This is real. This is real new life. And so we rejoice and proclaim 
Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! I invite you, as you are able, to please stand. And let us declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures. He was buried and was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Amen. So in a moment, uh, we will sing our offertory hymn. And in the third verse, there is a wonderful line about Jesus bursting forth from the grave. And I encourage you, do feel free to make as much noise as possible during that particular line. But first, let us share the peace. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the risen Christ be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace.
kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Bread and wine have been brought to the altar to be blessed. We've made our offerings for the work of the church. And we also, at this point in our service, bring to God our prayers and concerns for those in need at this time. We've been asked to pray for Ron Hammond, Cynthia Jenkins, Suzanne and Matthew Kane, and Julian Bukatsky. We also remember before God those who have recently died, among them Tina Ferris and Julie Hansen. And remember also, at the time of the anniversary of their death, Diana Austin, Tony Young, and Veronica Thornley. Be present. Be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen High Priest, and make yourself known in the breaking of bread. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned towards your world. In love you gave us Jesus, your Son, to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home to the city where angels sing your praise. We join with them in heaven's song. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light, with signs of faith and words of hope. He touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This is our song. Hosanna in the high. The crowds came out to see your son, yet on the night he was the freedom of your This is his story. This is in Christ. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it and said, this is my body given for you all. Then Jesus gave thanks for the wine he took the cup, gave it and said, this is my blood shed for you all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. On this day, we rejoice that he defied death, rose again, and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. This is our story. This is our song. 
Hosanna in the highest. Send your Holy Spirit on us now and upon these gifts, that by them we may feed on Christ with opened eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves, offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven, where all creation worships you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray that in our own lives we might discover the resurrection life of Jesus as we use the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. We hope that you will all feel invited and comfortable to participate in the sharing of Holy Communion, either by receiving the bread and wine, or if you don't normally receive bread and wine, simply hold your hands down and we will offer you a prayer of blessing for today. There will be three places where Holy Communion is available. Up at the high altar, where, we'll, where we will have a shared chalice, so you will be invited to drink from a chalice that others will also drink from. If you would rather receive that is bread that has been dipped into the wine, then there is a point at the font at the back of the church, and today also there will be a point just the other side of the pulpit in the Beckett Chapel there. There is no rush over communion. We have plenty of time. You will be directed by the sidesman to come up to the high altar. If you want to go to one of the intinction points where the bread is dipped in the wine, please just do that uh, as you are able. Um, there's no need to queue for a long time. We will wait until everyone's had the opportunity to come forward. Uh, and rather than clambering over others in your pew, just simply wait for others in your pew to move um, so that we can do this hopefully in a safe and orderly fashion. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia.
Let us pray. God of truth, we have seen with our eyes and touched with our hands the bread of life. Strengthen our faith that we may grow in love for you and for each other through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So before we head outside, a few notices. The first of which is Soul Space. Soul Space uh, workshop begins on the 15th of April and it's an opportunity for you to explore the Christian faith in an informal group setting. You can ask any questions you like, uh, no big, no question too big or too small. Uh, it's free to attend and it will run for five weeks. Um, there's more information on these cards which you'll find at the back and you can sign up by the parish website or on the weekly bulletin. And then the important thing, perhaps, straight after our service finishes, everyone is invited to join us in the Easter egg hunt in the churchyard. This is for everyone, not just for children. But if you are younger and perhaps a little quicker on your feet, can I encourage you to perhaps find one egg and then find somebody who's a little bit slower and see if you can help them out with hunting for their egg. That way, there should be enough to go round. I think that is everything. Just one notice from me before I give the blessing, which is to say a very big thank you to everybody who has worked so hard here at Holy Trinity through Holy Week and to Easter today. Especially, I can't thank everyone, but I'd like to thank, excuse me, <coughs> I'd like to thank my clergy colleagues, uh, our parish office staff who work hard behind the scenes, our church wardens, sidesmen, sideswomen, uh, our readers, uh, those who are servers, sacristans, communion assistants, especially Chris, our head verger, uh, the flower teams who work so hard to decorate the church. Music plays a really central part in our worship and celebration and marking of Holy Week. So I want to thank our musicians especially, Douglas, our director of music, Rebecca, our assistant director of music, and all of these wonderful folk behind me who've worked so hard this week singing so much music. I wonder if we could show our appreciation, please, to them. Thank you. Thank you. So would you please stand for the Easter blessing. The Lord be with you. And also with you. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. Amen. God the Son, who in bursting the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter God, the Holy Spirit, whom the risen Lord breathed into his disciples, empower you and fill you with his peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon each one of you and remain with you this Easter and always. Amen. We sing our final hymn, Thine Be the Glory. <laughs>
Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in the joy and peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.